This is one of the most complicated reviews I've ever done. For one thing, the San Remo U is on sale in the UK right now for around six thousand pounds, which makes it one of the most expensive home espresso machines on the market. What you're getting for that price is an almost unprecedented level of control over your espresso, which has helped me make some of the best espresso shots I've ever had in my life, but at times has left me incredibly frustrated and struggling to get a good shot and wasting a lot of coffee in the process. So in my review, I'm going to talk about what this machine can do and an honest look at who it is and isn't for. First things first, if you could give this video a like and tell me in the comments what you think about the San Remo U when you finish watching this video, that would be great. I'm glad to be able to share the details of this amazing machine with you thanks to San Remo UK who lent me this machine for three weeks to test and review. Likes, comments and subscriptions really help this review to reach more people who might like to know about it. Cheers for that. Now I don't know if we can all agree on this, but I think this machine looks fantastic. It's a big presence in any room and it's also just straight up big. It weighs a ton. Well. 32 kilos, which is a lot for a home espresso machine. And it takes up an impressive 32.8 centimeters wide, 50 centimeters deep, and 39.4 centimeters tall. It's not for tiny kitchens, but if you're about to spend this much money on a home espresso machine, you probably have a coffee bar, right? Honestly, in person, it simply looks impressive on the countertop with sleek angles that I much prefer to other very conservative looking machines like the E61 groups that are everywhere and that all look the same to me. All of the parts are perfectly machined, from the black main body to the stainless steel steam ones and drip tray. In the middle above the group is the touchscreen, which is the main selling point of the San Remo U as far as I'm concerned, and it presents you with all the information and data you could possibly need about your espresso. It's sharp and clear and automatically adjusts when you start pulling a shot to show you four different layouts of how your espresso shot is being brewed. A checkerboard of different data points, a list of the same ones, then a pressure profile and a flow rate. I found the screen pretty intuitive to use. It's decently responsive, though not quite as fast as a modern smartphone screen, but it's easy enough to go through all the menus and options that it never really presented any friction to me. Now, one of the things that quite a few people said to me in my post about this was that they didn't like the big branded U sign on the front of the face. There were enough comments about it that I started to realize that this is a big issue for some people. I totally get that big branding symbols are a turn off for some. This didn't bother me so much, and I kind of like the red dot that appears in the middle of the O when you're starting up the machine, an obvious callback to 2001 A Space Odyssey. But I know you want to hear about how the espresso tastes, and that's where this gets a little bit complicated. This shot that I just pulled tastes absolutely fantastic. I've had this machine for around two weeks now and I've put kilos of coffee through it, but at the beginning, things were not all rosy. It was a rocky start. I wasted a lot of coffee trying different flow profiles with different roast levels and actually just struggling to get a decent espresso shot. You, make me an espresso shot. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. But first, let me show you how this screen works. When you're pulling your shot, you can either use the three profiles that you set on the screen, or you can just start the paddle and it will begin your shot. The basic interface has six standard profiles, which are an espresso, a ristretto, and a lungo with a single and double shots. On top of that, it allows you to build up to 12 custom profiles with both pre and post infusion. Pre infusion is an increasingly common feature, which allows you to wet the puck before pulling your shot to promote a more even extraction. Post infusion, which is an incredibly rare feature that I have haven't seen on many machines, allows you to slow down the flow later on in the espresso shot when most of the compounds have already been extracted to reduce overall bitterness. I didn't want to waste all of this machine's incredible potential just making standard espresso shots, but man, flow profiling is really complicated. It adds a layer on an already difficult mix of variables to pull a good espresso shot. For those of you who have used lever machines before, it was nothing like that for me. You really have to research a lot and learn about how coffee extracts to get a good espresso with the U in flow profiling mode. One of the things that was difficult at the start was that this machine doesn't have a traditional OPV or overpressure valve, so it will go up to 11.5 or 12 bar if you just whack it full on. So if you're not adjusting what you're doing from your standard coffee, you're probably gonna get some really harsh tasting coffee. In the end, I realized that I not only needed to dial much finer, but I also needed to try and pull 
control different kinds of shots than I would on a standard espresso machine. There's no point having flow control if you're just going to try to use it to manually reproduce a nine bar standard espresso shot. I went down a whole rabbit hole of playing with things like Slayer shots and Blooming Espresso, and after many bad shots, I can say that learning all of this stuff improved my understanding of espresso a lot. The best shots I've had on the U have been custom ones, which I usually remember to save as a lever profile. That means that you can save a shot that you pulled manually and just have the machine reproduce it for you exactly, which is great. When you start to pull your shot, you can hear the whir of a volumetric pump, which is a lot quieter than the standard vibration pumps you'll hear on most other machines. It has incredibly accurate flow rates, so you can time your shots down to the milliliter without having to fuss about switching it off while you're steaming your milk at the same time. This profile that I loved starts with a six second pre-infusion, then slowly ramps up to eight bar for most of the shot, and then jumps to 11 bar to really extract the core of this lighter roast espresso, and tails off at the end with a five mil post infusion. This all took around 45 seconds, and this is an outstanding espresso, with the fruity blackcurrant flavor absolutely highlighted, but without any of that harsh acidity that you sometimes get when pulling with a standard nine bar machine. The temperature stability is also excellent and can be set to one tenth of a degree, which I think it's pretty much overkill, but I'm sure there are some really interesting experiments that you can do with that level of control. One of the other questions I got was about energy usage, and yes, this is a 2350 watt machine that has a pretty high energy draw, at least when it first comes on. However, a few good points about this machine are that it has great insulation and keeps warm. So if you're using a machine to pull multiple shots, you'll find that the energy draw drops. You'll also find that it comes online very fast. I was able to get consistent temperatures for a shot just five minutes after turning it on, as the the brew boiler is a modest 0.5 liters and can handle back-to-back -back shots with no problems. I wasn't able to make espressos quickly enough to slow down this machine, so if you wanted to use it in a small cafe, I don't think you'd have any problems if you plumbed it in. I could also get it up to power to steam milk for a late night hot chocolate in around seven or eight minutes, which is great because standard espresso machines might take 15 or 20. And if you're like me and you sometimes forget to switch your coffee machine off, there is an eco options menu that has switch off timers in there as well. Let's talk about the steaming power for milk-based drinks. While practicing with different steaming pressures to get used to this more commercial style steaming wand, I tried to get it to run out of power with maybe 10 back-to-back -back steaming sessions and it was still going strong. The wand has cold touch insulation, so you can move around as much as you want without having to worry about getting burned. At the beginning, I did really struggle to get consistent milk foam because of the crazy power of this steam. The maximum steam pressure of 1.8 bar was just too powerful and I had to slow it down, otherwise I was gonna get over frothed milk every time. Only when I brought it down to around 1.5 bar under the advice of one of my contacts at San Remo, did I start to get much more consistent milk foam for latte art. The start and stop lever for the steam and the hot water tap was mostly great. I prefer it to the slow and sometimes inconsistent open of a twisty knob, but why does it have to be a toggle switch? Couldn't it just be an on and off switch, like click down for on and click up for off? Speaking of which, I do want to talk about some of the issues I had with the San Remo U as well. I should put a disclaimer in this section to say that I'm borrowing the test version from San Remo, so there may be a few small changes on the final retail version. If you're spending £6,000 on an espresso machine, you're expecting a lot, and there are a few small issues with this one that had me puzzled. The biggest one for me is that the drip tray is a little bit annoying. It has this kind of form over function approach with this curved tray that folds over the front, but it's just much more likely to spill than other drip trays I've used. It does look nice and it comes out easily, but I'm just surprised that it's so far back. Perhaps this was a way to reduce counter space on this already large machine. It is an easy fix as the drip tray has variable positioning, so I can pull it a little bit further forward if I want to. I also found the steam pretty hard to get right. That 1.8 bar was just too strong for me with a 250 ml measure of milk for a standard latte. Even taking it down to 1.4 or 1.5 bar, I still pulled in a lot of big bubbles and found it more difficult than other machines to get smooth textured milk for latte art. Maybe it's just good practice for when I open up my cafe in a few weeks, huh? From time to time, a fan also kicks in, presumably to cool the machine, but there's no way to turn it off without switching off the machine and then switching it back on again. Another small issue was that if you shut off the machine before you save a lever profile, you can't get it back. The menus are also oddly arranged as well. It's mostly fine, but I find it a bit odd that the eco functions are always visible on top and not in a settings menu, but then your lever profiles are buried within your profiles menu. I'd also like to be able to get a preview of my lever profiles before setting them to one of the three shots I can pull. I forget which ones were for which beans, so having a visualization in the menus would be really useful, and I'm sure this is something that Sanremo can fix with an update somewhere down the line. These are small 
small complaints that are not really that consequential, but at this price point, I'm basically hoping for perfection. After all this playing around with the Sanremo U, sometimes making dozens of shots a day, I felt really conflicted while writing this review. The number one takeaway is that this machine really isn't for everyone, and that's okay. Not everybody wants to go out and learn all of this extra stuff about coffee and flow profiling and struggle to pull a decent brew more often than they would on a standard espresso machine. This is hard to say because I really appreciate Sanremo lending me this machine that I totally cannot afford because I am the target audience for this kind of machine. I'm an espresso nerd and I love playing around with all this stuff. But I think a lot of people who haven't made espresso as big a part of their lives as I have would get frustrated with this machine and would be happier with a more affordable and less feature-rich machine. And I, for one, am really glad that super high-level machines like this exist for those of us who want to play around with lever profiles and all of that nerdy stuff. This machine is built for those espresso heads. If you found this video useful and interesting, please give it a like and let me know your thoughts about the Sanremo U in the comments below. Are you the kind of person who would love nerding out experimenting with this machine, or would you prefer something more traditional and manual? Cheers for watching all the way to the end, you wonderfully over-caffeinated people, and on videos coming up I will be talking about flow profiling, which kind of latte art jugs you should use, and whether a refractometer is a useful tool for a home barista. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.